Welcome back, everybody. It's Ago, and we're in chapter 10 now, I believe. I think. Final chapter. They didn't even bother labeling it 10. Things are getting intense. Heat seeking warhead. We've been hit. Sensing Coriolis deviation across orbital ring. Reading shift to west by northwest, magnitude comma two. Correcting tower balance. Releasing anchor bolt 127 through 214. Director, the Beanstalk cannot hold. The Saviorite Rebels are very close to capturing it. We have no choice. Initialize IL. Prepare the conduit. Roger. Its authorization has failed. How come? We're locked out by Professor Klaus. We can't secure access from our side. What did you say? Trinity processes synchrate at 96%. That should be good enough. Let's begin the experiment. Dangerous. Ridiculous. It's perfectly safe. We are about to bear witness to the birth of a universe. Once, only a god could perform such a miracle. But today, mankind moves one step closer to the divine. Are you serious? Do you even fully understand that thing? What's the alternative? Do you want to just surrender this place to them? The conduit is a gift from some divine entity. It is a gateway. A gateway that will take us to an entirely new world. You're delusional. Divine entity? The conduit is nothing more than a meta-universe manifold. Galea, we humans are fools. We've ravaged the planet. We are on the verge of burning even the skies above. Conduit could transform us into something so much more. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the birth of a brand new universe. No, so no. seeing how this connects to Xenoblade DE is insane. Uh, but I don't feel like I have the right to make say I have the, like what that connection is because that'd be a massive spoiler. For those of you who haven't seen that fight through play the game, but that's just crazy. Whoa. Who would have ever thought? Wow. Fools indeed. The time has come. Jeez, how old is the Praetor? I think in New Game Plus you can actually battle the Praetor, which is pretty nutty. Alright, let's check that affinity ward real quick. Just cool. leave it to me. And then let's hop back in. 
So I'm actually really, really glad I started this playthrough. I did it. I started the first episode just as like an International Games Day kind of uh, treat to myself and you guys. And I said, you know what? Let's continue the whole thing because you guys seem to like the first episode. I'm glad I've replayed this. There's so much more that I have been able to take perspective of because I've played Torna and I've played Xenoblade DE. And so I'll be making a video of my thoughts on that, how how that changed what I saw and what I thought, because it's kind of crazy how different the game is. Where am I supposed to go? There's Oh, we're still in the elevator, that's what's happening. It was just like a weird loading screen and I thought that we had um gotten out of the elevator. It stopped moving! Perhaps we've arrived at the end point. If we go outside, we find out. Good point. Let's have a look. <laughs> Welcome to space. Look up. The stars, they're close enough to touch. The other view is quite something too. Look at the cloud sea all the way down there. So this is the top of the world tree. Oh, that sound. Huh? What is that? It's Elysium. Elysium? <laughs> What's left of it? This way, let's check it out. I'm getting such Xenoblade DE vibe right now from the end of that game. Oh, Malice. It's been a while, Father. Logos. Is that my real name? What's it mean? Logos. It has no meaning. All it represents is the ego of those who named you. How many years has it been? I forget. It has been far too long. You know why I'm here, don't you? I know it all. All that you experience is passed on to me here. Then, let's get straight to the point. Huh? No need to rush, my child. I'm fading. I'll be gone soon enough. Is that right? Then I'll take it all. Do as you wish. If you believe that is your role. <laughs> is that choice really mine? Answer me. This is what I came to hear. It is a choice you made, together. Good answer. Thanks for creating me. Ah. And here comes the other answer. Oh, there's a heart to a heart here. I feel like we have to do this when it's laying right in front of us like this. So let's... Top of the world, this heart to heart needs the following characters. Blades must be engaged. Okay. Okay, I think that fixed How it. remarkable. That view down below is the world where we live, isn't it? So it would appear. I had no idea it was possible for humans to reach these kind of heights. I really wish they had voice acted the whole game where we have these little conversations like this outside of the heart to hearts, like voice acted those as well, like in the main storyline. 
Because there's several areas where we get out of cutscenes and they don't voice act them, and I think they'd be really nice if they did. And this world tree's been around since forever, too. I'm not sure I can keep up with what they're finding out here. Hey, Prince, look! Over down there! What is it? You see something? Look! Right over there! It's Genbu! That's gotta be Genbu! Seriously? Wow, you're right! That does look like Tantal. What are you talking about? Of course we can't see Tantal from all the way up here. We totally can, though! Come over and take a look! I'm sure it's just a cloud or something. I don't see any sign of Tantel anywhere. Not over there, over here! Look right there! It's so small, it's difficult to judge. <laughs> Are you sure you're not imagining it? Oh, Bridget. No imagining going on here! That's Genbu. Hmm. Is it Bridget? What is it, Lady Morag? Well, it's just... I think I may have spotted Morardane down there. <laughs> Do you think that's really it? <laughs> oh, man. What? That's awesome. Oh, hey, you found your place too. Where do you mean? Over there, next to that strangely shaped cloud. Huh. Oh, man. Y'all are going to give Bridget a headache. Doesn't that distinctive shape look just like Morardane? I do believe you're right. Those wide planes look just the right shape. And those shapes flying around it must be Titan battleships. Oh, man. They're, they've really lost much. it. Incredible really how one can feel it. the majesty of Morardane from. Quite right, Lady Morag. Hold on, you two. Take a closer look. I'm pretty sure that's the Leftherian Islands. Morai Dane doesn't have all that greenery, does it? Ah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, goodness. So there's a little heart to heart for you guys. I don't think I've done any of those for you guys um, in this playthrough. Because I've seen all almost all of them, pretty much. Um, so they didn't interest me too much, but that one was right there, you know, just kind of given to us. So I thought I'd go ahead and do it. Can't believe it's the final chapter. <laughs> Alright, you guys, so I was like looking for a door and I was like, do I go through here? You just, you just walk through it. Seems real obvious now, doesn't it? It's kind of humiliating. We're so close. We're so close. We're right there. We're about to meet the man himself. The creator. Who, uh, who did it all. Well, no, we, we go to Elysium first, I suppose. Mm. It sure is bright. Yeah, it's right through here. I'm sure of it. We've almost reached Elysium. Looks like a desert to me. I'm pretty sure it's all desert. Yep. What? Elysium's gone. What is this place? No. Uh, can this place really be Elysium? What's left of it? Where's the greenery? The water? Bird song? There's nothing. Nothing here at all! What a wretched sight. I have not seen anything like this in all my years on Orrest. Pyra! I don't understand. I don't get it! This... This is not how I... remember. That bell sound must be coming from somewhere. Is someone here? Hmm. Well, there's only one man who could be here. Over there. Poppy detect one big thing, kind of like building, over that direction. Sound seemed like it come from there. That building, eh? Then there's no point hanging around here. 
Yeah. Only one way to find out. Let's go, Rex. All right. It Let's might still it. be okay. Maybe it's just this bit that's destroyed. There's bound to be something over that way. So the fact that the space station's been basically unoccupied for like hundreds of years, the chance of oh. all of this staying properly intact and airtight and there not being a leak where like all of our friends here are suffocating is just absurdly low. That was something I thought about the first time I came here. But something else I thought about is just how sad it is. But there's really nothing left. I also thought it was weird. So we have this kind of really industrial wall and concrete looking roads. But then if you look at the actual city itself, it doesn't look particularly huh. modern. Although I guess it's also destroyed. An old schoolyard. Swing set. This place really looks like left. it was once a city, and quite an old one at that. It's actually a lot like the stuff we saw in Moritha. Way more dusty, though. Maybe because it's so dry up here. Huh? It seems to have been a child's vehicle. Right. So that means people lived here once. It must have been a grand old city. It stretches further than the eye can see. You could fit the entire population of all rest into this place and with room to spare. Except there's nothing left. Although I guess they could move everybody up here if they really wanted to, although it'd be... Albeit a bit crazy. Huh, I can't believe it's almost over. I enjoy this game a lot. So it's kind of sad to see it over. I'm probably just gonna replay it. But I'll do that. I'll probably wait to replay it again, because there's some videos I want to make for you guys, like the Alma Redux fight. I want to make a tutorial over that because that fight is brutal, especially for new players. And I'll, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people, if they didn't originally play the game, they're probably going to try to pick it up. Um, there's some people I know who never played 2, but they played um, Xenoblade DE, who may be considering getting into this game. And so I is think... That it? It'd be nice to do some tutorials about some endgame stuff. Because this, this game has a lot more endgame content than uh, DE by a long shot. The bells have stopped. How inviting. Kind of creepy. A signal we should enter, perhaps? We probably should. Welcome home, my children. Who's there? Father? What? You don't mean... The architect is here, but where? I am always here. Come to me. Please look! Over there is staircase. It seems to lead to a lower level. Hmm. Guess we have to. Oh boy. It's time. It's actually time to meet the old man. I know I said that last time, but that was more kind of just seeing what's left of Elysium. Here we actually get to meet the old man and we learn a lot. So... 
This will be really interesting. I'm excited. So I haven't seen this in forever. <laughs> the fact that these escalators still work. So, did they actually give these? Oh! They actually have steps on them! The ones in a DE are just like... They just look like flat boards. Like rollers. The building's holding up well inside. Quality of structural materials much better than in city outside. This made of same substance as World Tree itself. Same as the World Tree. Huh? Hey, where is everyone? Pyra! Gramps! Pyra! Mithra! What is that? The Ardanian Imperial Army. Their equipment looks ancient. Like it's come from the past. What is up with this place? Why, Rex? Huh? You told us Elysium was real. My lady and I traveled all this way at your behest. Master Rex, did you intentionally deceive us? I trusted you, you know. I came here because I trusted you. N Nia, Dromark, what are you talking about? How do you explain this? You, you've got it wrong. I told you. I promised Pyra to... Pyra. This is oh, such a weird right. run of cutscenes Pyra. right here. Pyra. Pyra, Pyra, Pyra. Is that it? You've only got eyes for her. Get your head out of your ass. Nay, you're being weird. What is going on? My lady has given up everything for you. Yet still, you realize nothing. Even now, you cannot see. I've been here all along. Why won't you realize? Look! Just look at me, Rex! Huh? Huh? Are we- are we doing this? Our foes are preparing an elemental okay. attack. Time I to don't take remember. Time to remember what time no to you. What do? That was uh. Fight. That was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I don't remember having to do that. Uh, Am I gonna have I'm to sorry. fight everybody just like DE, where you had to fight like Answer all of your past Rex. Why did you lie to us? How could you betray our trust? What is this set of cutscenes? These are so weird. Like, I remember this happening, but I don't remember why. Although I don't remember having to fight them, but I do remember him going crazy. I don't get it. Uh, uh, 
Why would Nia and Dromark? You really are a fool. Ah! <laughs> oh, Morag. Oh no, she's level Morag? 92. Bridget? Huh? Moradain? You're so thoughtless. Morag! Here you are, wasting time. And all the while, my countrymen are... Do you have any idea what you've done? What... What are you... You just run ahead, without a thought for anyone else, and this is the result! Okay. This is getting interesting. Yeah. Zeke, I assume, is next, or maybe Tora and Poppy. I know it's still I more I couldn't Bridget. save anyone. If only we hadn't come here. I could have saved my people. I could have saved Niall. If only it weren't for you, Rex! Ooh, Morag's angry. I didn't mean to. I hope you're happy now. You dragged us to some empty ruins. I hope that was worth everything we sacrificed. All right, let's do it. More eggs probably gonna be really hard to beat. One shot. Spinning Let me take me it. Flesh wound. Ooh, I had to try. I had to try twice to beat her. More eggs. Her evasion rate's just so high. It's like nothing I can do would touch her. Please, stop this! What's the use in fighting amongst ourselves now? What's the use? For vengeance! What more reason do I need? What? Or I accept the kind of vengeance person. We well, must take our vengeance. I don't know. For the thousands of lives you have stolen! I killed! No, no way! I didn't! I'll have your life for an apology, Rex! <laughs> Stop right there! How dare you run! What is with this run of cutscenes, man? They're weird. What is this place? What's wrong with everyone? Pyra! Mithra! Grams! Where are you? Where are you guys? Why Rex Rex run? Tora. Poppy. Zeke and Pandoria. Don't tell me you're wrong. You having fun, chum? Playing the hero like the kid you are, stringing us adults along. That, that, that's not... Rex Rex's bad friend. Why Rex Rex become driver when Tora cannot become driver? Tora tries so hard, and for what? It useless! Master Pawn is right. Rex just have a little luck and become driver of Aegis? Poppy never asked to be born as imitation. Poppy want to be real, too. Not fair! I bet it felt real good, didn't it? Getting special treatment from everyone. Getting chosen by the Aegis. Who decided you should have all that power? How about you hand it over to the prince right now? He deserves it. Stop it already! I did nothing wrong to any of you. So you haven't worked that out either. In your hurry to get here, you never stop to consider all the things you left lying in your wake. Oh, do I have to fight them both by myself? I'm screwed. Zeke is absurdly strong. Taking okay, out both of them time to runs, take you not down. Gonna be good. Do it. There he Let is. me show you. It. Oh, shut up! Oh wow, Zeke went down fast. <laughs> Compared to Tora. That wasn't so bad. Morag was way worse than that. Enough stop! 
Totora, Poppy. No, I never wanted this. Zeke, Pandoria. What are you doing, Rex? What? Gramps. This place. What is the point? Oh, Gramps. What is the point of us, really? We are born as blades, then return to our slumber, again and again, over countless years. Until we become titans, to wander this world for countless more. And at the end of it all, we sink into nothingness. Have you ever thought about it? What it means to exist for close to an eternity with no clear purpose or goal? That's... Must be nice to be human. Living for a limited time, thinking limited thoughts. It must be so much easier. I envy your kind. Just think, Rex, would you? What would you do if you were me? Would you be happy to drift around the ocean with a human on your back? Is that all I am to be? I don't know how I'm supposed to answer that. Why are you asking me? You're being strange. Everyone's acting so strange. I can find it. Welcome back. You're late, Rex. Where did you wander off to? <laughs> Pyra. Mithra. Come on. Let's go ahead and eat. I've cooked up a whole bunch of your favorites. I hope you've got room. Pirate's face. Oh. Well, eat up. Ah, uh, the two Aegis girls are beautiful. Which kind of bread do you want? Oh, uh, um... Maybe this, and this. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, do you want some wine? Oops, <laughs> you're too young. Silly me. Mithra, has something happened? What do you mean? It's just, you're a lot nicer than normal. Stop it. I'm always nice to you, aren't I? If... if you say so. Hey, Rex, come on. How can you sit down to eat without washing your hands first? That's a faux pas. Go wash your hands right now. I... 
Um, sorry. I'm just as confused as he is on these cutscenes. You're acting almost like Mithra today, Pyra. Did you scrub them properly? Yeah. They're clean. Great. Okay, then. Let's eat. Thanks for the food. Um... It looks really good. Tastes even better. Of course it does. After all, I made it myself. Maybe I'll try my hand next time. Mithra, no. You know how that always ends. But carbon's good for you. Anyway, I want to do something <laughs> nice for Rex, too. No <laughs> so she means she Who's going to save the world if Rex gets the runs? You're so mean. It was only that one time. Um, it's okay, you two. I don't care who cooks. I'm just happy with... I'm happy with... <laughs> Rex. It's so strange. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here anymore. Everyone's all wrong. They all said I... But now you two... Did... Did I go wrong somewhere? I think... That's enough. Please, Father. What was that horrendous shit show? Oh my goodness. Like that run of cutscenes was just weird. Oh man, it looks like you put everybody through a hard time. You guys. Uh, Rex. Why are we all here? I thought I was... I merely wished to examine the shapes of your hearts. That voice. You're... My name is Klaus. The architect of this world. I have watched over you all this time. I have seen your thoughts, your desires, the things you have achieved. So you did that just now? Yes. Those were not your present forms, but alternate possibilities. Your other selves that lie within. That is what I wanted to see. Our other selves? You mean we're all thinking stuff like that, deep down? Was that how we really feel? Then you saw it too. Looks like we were all shown the same kind of stuff. It creeped me out. What are you trying to prove? Those were the fears you harbor. I don't get it at all. What was your purpose in showing us this? Those were not pleasant visions to behold. My only purpose was to find out how mankind has changed. And where it is headed. And were you disappointed? No. As you stand before me right now, that is who you are. That is enough. 
Architect, sir. I came here because I met Pyra. Is this really Elysium? Are you really? I will show you everything. Memories. Mine. And those of this planet. This world was once the stage of a struggle for survival that dwarfed this current predicament. The world was an unseemly place, though glimpses of beauty persisted. What should people live for? Who should they live for? They live for themselves, to harbor desires and struggle to realize them. That is the natural state of man. But I did not think that was good enough. I lost hope for mankind. I searched tirelessly for an outside solution. And one day I found it, the conduit. Why it chose to appear before us, I do not know. However, its existence presented a new possibility. Possibility? Our world was not the only one. Endless universes coexist, side by side, yet all completely unaware of one another. The conduit was our link to these foreign worlds. And I opened that forbidden gateway, praying that it would change the world. You have seen the plain called Moritha, have you not? That is what remains of my world. When I opened the conduit, many people and many things disappeared into distant dimensions. All that remained here were the ruins of Moritha, and half of my body. Yeah, body? Half of me lives on in some other dimension, but not for much longer. What do you mean? The moment of my other self's demise draws near. Father, you... I was a fool. Because of my foolishness, I lost everything. Left here, alone and broken, I longed for oblivion, but even that eluded me. This is my punishment. Retribution from on high, for the sin I have committed. On high? There was only one thing I could do. I had to atone for my sin. I swore to restore this world. The first thing I created was a special particulate substance with the ability to restore deteriorated matter. You all know it as the Cloud Sea. Hi. The Cloud Sea can disassemble matter it comes in contact with and rebuild it in the image of all the things that once made up this world. This way, little by little, I could rebuild the world I had brought to ruin. Next, I began to recreate life. I gathered miniature vessels containing memories of all this planet's former life forms. And I scattered them across the Cloud Sea. 
These are the core crystals. The crystals bonded with the Cloud Sea's particulate reconstructors and formed the nuclei of new life. Those nuclei developed into minute life forms, the Titans, who would, over time, grow larger and larger. Finally, the Titans gave birth to complex organisms based on the data in their core crystals. This newly birthed life, over untold millennia, evolved into a new breed of mankind. So that's how we came to live in this world. But... I did not trust this world, born as it had been. What if it were to repeat our mistakes? What if... someone like me appeared? To stave off these doubts, I implemented one final measure. And so the blades were born. <sighs> Ontos, Logos, and Numa. The three cores of the Trinity processor formed their cornerstone. However, Ontos triggered a space-time transition event and disappeared forever. I was left with the other two, Logos and Numa, and trusting them with managing the blades. Malos and Pyra. Those are the names that you now know them under. So... I am... Numa. Managing? The core crystals at the heart of each blade are tasked with relaying all kinds of information to Logos and Numa about the selection pressures of the outside world and the biological status of their bonded human, but also the experiences and emotions they share. And it's really funny how they like, continually accrues. How they're just sitting on screen while this is happening. Is sent back really to the weird. core crystals. And this code is used to create new, further evolved blades. These blades too become titans in time and create new generations of life forms. This was the new circle of life I had created. A grand scheme. It boggles the mind, Dad. So we're all born from this endless cycle of life to replace the victims of the previous world. That's right. But there were also a handful of survivors. I believe you saw them when you were in Moritha. The unfortunate ones who clung to life. Ah. You mean those monsters? Were they originally people? Core crystals were first conceived as a replacement for human brain cells, a product of mankind's age-old quest for immortality. And that's what became of them. How awful. But that technology became the starting point for the creation of blades and titans. So, in one sense, their sacrifice was not in vain. Though not all may see it as such. So tell us, in the end... And now you're... Did we a lot of your questions you have been answered. What do you think? I couldn't possibly. Well, those phantasms which you all experienced earlier... Those are feelings that lurk in all of your hearts. As well as that man. 
Amalphasus. When a person loses something, they cannot help but seek a reason why, within themselves or in others. They seek a concrete answer to the question of who they really are deep inside. Such a very lonely existence. But perhaps that is what it is to be human. All this data passed through me, and I knew. Huh. All of you. You were not in any way different from us before. Huh. That's why I did not intervene. Five hundred years ago, when the man finally arrived here, I did nothing when he took away Logos and Numa. I stood and watched as Logos, instantiated into blade form, set out to purge the world. You don't make sense. Didn't you go to all that trouble to rebuild it? Then why would you... It is fate. Fate? It is fated to happen. It cannot but happen. My atonement was doomed from the start. That can't be. I had made my peace with it. Once more, I longed for nothing more than to disappear. However, something has now changed. And that is you, Rex. You and Numa. Me? And Pyra and Mithra? You reforged your bond in a way I had not thought possible. And the life you share. Moreover, the conduit which fell into a stubborn silence after the world's end has begun stirring once more. Rex, the power you and Numa exercise is the conduit's power. It comes leaking out of some far-flung dimension. And it is a power we can know nothing about. But with its help, the world may be about to change. What's all this shaking? It is Logos. Malos. Trying to destroy this world and everything in it. What? Remember, at heart, he is but an information processing unit. Neither good nor evil. He is driven by a certain impulse. The despair that the man named Amalthus felt. I see. So it was right. What I felt back then, I mean. Rex. Rex. What is it you desire? What else? To stop Malos. And if you succeed? I'll punch him in his stupid face, and then... ...probably get a drink with him or something. That's the sixth rule of the Salvager's Code. First have a punch out, then drink to forget. Once you've forgotten, the friendship's all set. I'm... ...not old enough to drink yet, though. I see. Numa. No, I should call you Pyra and Mithra. What is it? I want to apologize for having burdened you with all this. Don't worry. We're actually grateful. Thanks to you, Father, we got to meet Rex and everyone else. Those are cherished memories.
father. I have transferred all of Elysium's data and authorizations to you. Make me proud. We will. Rex. Yes. I will disappear soon. When I do, the conduit will likely disappear from this world. You will not be able to use your power forever. I understand. We'll make do somehow. I'm counting on you. Close. Hmm. Have you changed your mind about this world? Right now, I think I am glad I met you. Got it. Then, our answers match. Thank you for giving us all life. Oh boy. Mitra, this game's so good. Where's Malos? And the end of the game if really just here, ties it all I together so well. Gone. Where is it? Tell us. The greatest of all artifices. The artifice that exists solely to destroy the world. Ion. Ion. So that's what Malos meant. One big beautiful robot. Then that's where we'll go. All right, we got the whole gang pack. All right. Uh, I know I've made my spiel about this. But you can't have a landmark thing coming with bump, 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 bump. When you have like this intense moment coming. Like, come on, you kill it. Uh, that being said, though, I'm going to kill the intense moment because that's the end of this episode. Um, this episode was probably really long. I didn't necessarily mean for it to be, but the cutscenes, I just didn't feel like chopping them up. Um, but this is the end of this episode, and the next episode will be the final episode in the series, which is both relieving and saddening all at the same time. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.